just so happens to be my birthday with the Purple Troops. So your name's here, Cover Road, William Cruz, Scott, Kenneth, McBroom, Tony. There's one we're here for. Tony. Yeah. Jerry Parker, Danny Gibson. Boys, y'all doing a heck of a job. We're going to march for you. Show our patience. Go. I Tony, I hope you can see this. It's Operation Desert Storm. United States Army, 212th Engineering Company, Sergeant Tony Sons, January 16, 1991. Yeah. We're going to take care of you, baby. You'll be home just a few days, guaranteed. All right, everybody say hi to Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi. Yeah, look at there. Got holding up the flag back there. Hold them there. I'm going to zoom in on them. Mama Viola. That's what I Hey, Tonk. Hurry up and get yourself all home. All right, we're getting ready, Tony, for the march. It's going to take place here in about 15 more minutes. Ah, uh, here we go. Let's have a big wave of smiles in there. Uh, <laughs> Say, so, so what was that? <laughs> Flag's about to carry Sue away there. <laughs> There's Homer guarding the van. He ain't going to let nobody pick it up and tow it off there. <laughs> It'll be a good crowd for this thing. There we go. Look at here. There he is. Don't you wave at me because I don't want you to. You better not wave at us. That old son will die. He's mad. Hey, Travis. Travis, come on, Chief. Hey, Travis, come here. What do you? Look here. Come here, what do you? Oh! You got to run in your car. Oh! 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 I'm one of my first cousins that's still up there. He teaches up there. Bill Sandy. Uh, I don't know who all of these speakers are. Uh, uh, well, 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 he used to be in the Well, I guess he's an animal person. He goes all over the United States, though, with a for all these 
for being here. This is an occasion where we want to honor and support all of our men and women in the Persian Gulf, and that's what we're going to do here today. First, we open up the program with prayer by Mr. Sam Black Bingham, a World War II veteran from Belbuck. Mr. Bingham. Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, commander of all hope, father of all mankind, we humble ourselves before thy throne of grace and mercy this beautiful Sunday afternoon in the name of this great country. We are indeed thankful for this great country and all those who've gone on before us, worked, fought, and died, that we might enjoy the things that we have. Be with us. May we ever preserve and conserve these resources and pass them on to future generations. Our prayers this afternoon, Father, in some special way for those brave men and women fighting in the Mideast. If it be according to their will, grant them the victory that they are fighting go gallantly for, and with that victory may peace be molded throughout the entire world for many years to come. We are indeed thankful, Father, for each and every individual gathered here this afternoon to honor those great people. Be with them, comfort them. Come fish away when we pray for those that have loved ones over there. Comfort them as only as they can. Hasten the days that they might be brought home. Father, we know that we are but finite people. We may not know how to pray as we should. But thou, Father, in thy infinite wisdom and knowledge, grant unto us those things that thou knowest best that we have before we ask. And may we ever be thankful to it. Father, we are indeed, we pray for the people in authority in this great country, the President, the Congress, state and local government. Give them wisdom and knowledge that they might make the right decisions that this war might soon be brought to a, a gross and decisive victory. Peace may prevail. Forgive us while we fall short. This is our prayer in Christ our Redeemer's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Next, you look to my left, you see a flagpole. We have two Vietnam veterans, Mike Neal and Mike Cartwright, who will be raising the flag, while our own Bedford Countyan, Charlene Rose, will sing our national anthem. And I'd like to say Charlene's husband, Bubba, is in Saudi Arabia at this time. Charlene. Oh, 
Smith will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us face the flag, please. Read that to me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's certainly delightful to see this many people here today. I'm certainly proud of Bedford County. If Phil Mahaffey would step forward just a moment, I'd like to recognize Phil. He's the first one that brought this to my attention. He's worked hard. He's also a Vietnam veteran. He's worked hard for two weeks now putting this together, and I'd like to publicly thank Phil and ask him to say a few words. Let's give him a hand. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of Bedford County. I would like to say just one thing to you. I sure am glad to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, Tracy Hargrove. This is still live, isn't it? Tracy Hargrove will lead us in a couple of songs, patriotic songs. Tracy? A shovel of CHS band were first played. What's the song? <laughs> America the Beautiful.
ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tracy Scott Hargrove, and I'm from Lewisburg, Tennessee. Some of you might have uh, known me here in Shelbyville from singing in the Hee Haw Howdy and the Music and Memory Show. And I've done this song in, in a lot of the shows that we have did in the past, and I would like to dedicate this song to all of our troops over in the Middle East, and may God bless each and every one of them, and may God bless the USA. Say a few words. Thank you. No, no speech, but I couldn't help reflecting while uh, I was standing there and looking out on the south side of this square. You know, this 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 square is about 175 years old. These buildings are about 150 years old. Some of them. Just think how many events have been right here through the years. I know, and I know you know, there's never been a more patriotic, great day on the south side of the square in Chevrolet, Tennessee, than today. Yeah. It is good to be patriotic. Everywhere you go, you see flags. It is a good feeling. There is probably no higher virtue than being patriotic. We love our country. We have the greatest country. It's just good to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pete. Next, we have a state senator. He's now from Rutherford County, but we consider him Bedford County. He has a lot of roots in Bedford County. Senator Andy Warman. Andy. I just have to echo Pete's comments. It's just great to see this big a crowd. I'd like to say as a Vietnam veteran, how much it means to me to see the patriotism now that you're giving and the support that you're giving our troops overseas. Let us not forget the World War I, the World War II, the Korean, the Panama, the Granadas, the Vietnam veterans, and let's make sure that this crowd is only a dimple compared to the crowd when these troops come back from Saudi Arabia. Thank 
Thank you, Andy. Next, I'd like to read a resolution that our Bedford County Board of Commissioners passed February the 12th. Whereas Iraq, under the leadership of Saddam Hussein, has invaded the country of Kuwait, and whereas negotiations by the United Nations for peaceful withdrawal were unsuccessful, whereas the United States, together with other allied United Nations forces, is now engaged in armed conflict, and whereas the state of Tennessee has furnished more National Guard and Reserve personnel than any other state, and whereas there are men and women in Bedford County serving in this armed conflict, and whereas it is the desire of the Board of Commissioners of Bedford County, Tennessee, to recognize and commend the efforts of all Allied troops, more especially those men and women from Tennessee and Bedford County. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of Bedford County, Tennessee, that it go on record in full and complete support of the men and women serving in the United States military effort, and they be commended and publicly acknowledged for their courage and dedication in the effort to maintain the liberties and freedoms to which all Americans have grown accustomed. Be it further resolved that this resolution be spread upon the minutes of the Board of Commissioners of Bedford County, Tennessee, and otherwise distributed and published this 12th day of February, 1991. This is voted for by all 18 commissioners and signed by all 18 commissioners. Today we have someone here that I think is the most special person here. And if there's anyone else here that's been in Saudi Arabia these few months, I'd like you to come forward. But we have behind me on this stage a United States Congressman, a Marine Corps General, and an Admiral. But today I think they'll have to take a back seat to a young lady that's on this stage. She served in Saudi Arabia for the past three to four months. She's a daughter of one of our Bedford County Board of Commissioners, J.C. Hillen. She went to school here in Shevelville. She attended and graduated from Cascade High School. She came back from Saudi Arabia some two weeks ago in emergency leave. She has about a five or six month old child and a five year old daughter that's with her here today. And I'm gonna ask her to come forward at this time and to say a few words, and as I told her earlier, just say whatever she's thinking. She's what this is all about, her and 500,000 more. And let's welcome Sergeant Elizabeth Betsy Hillen Petty. seen here today. I've not cried since I left home. <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm sorry. <laughs> my husband, is, who is also in my unit that is in Saudi Arabia, has been a member of the Color Guard in our unit, which is the 251st in Lewisburg, for the last seven or eight years. And I've noticed every time we've had a parade, including the 4th of July, when the colors have gone by, that it's getting to be more and more noticeable Ooh. that most people do not stand up and respect the colors anymore. But then I noticed coming up here this morning, as I, I marched behind the color guard, that almost everybody did. So if what we're doing over there has done nothing more than make people realize what the United States stands for and what the people who have died and been members of the, of the Army, the Marines, the Navy before me, then I think we've proved it now. Because the United States is standing behind us and we do appreciate it. And what you do today, even though you may feel it's a small part, means more to us than anything you can, any way you could possibly know. So all I can say is thank you. We do know how you feel, and it makes what we're doing a whole lot easier knowing that when we come home, we're going to be accepted again as part of the United States. So thank you. Thank you, Betsy. I believe I failed to mention that she, her husband was in Saudi Arabia and her brother. We have a lot of families today here with members of their families. Is any other Bedford County person here today, we don't want to overlook anybody that's been to Saudi Arabia and back here today. We checked, <coughs> uh, Sergeant Johnson. Thank you, Paul. I think we all know that this is one of the most crucial days in the conflict. At D-Day plus one, I'm proud to see the good people of Shuffle and Bedford County doing what they should be doing, getting out here and visibly showing our support for the troops. 
so that Sergeant Petty here can carry the word back so that through mail, through, through television reports, that the word can travel to our loved ones overseas to let them know that we are 100% behind what they are doing. It's a crucial time in our nation's history, and I think we're not just showing ourselves, but we're showing the world that what they might have thought we were like during and after Vietnam is wrong. Mm -hmm. This is not a weak country. This is not a divided country. This is a strong and patriotic country that is and will be standing behind our troops in whatever conflict they're involved in. It's a humbling experience for me to even be at the same podium. It'll soon be graced by the presence of authentic, hometown, all-American heroes like General Schaffner and Admiral Brest. These are two men who rose to the top of their military profession, who fought in some of the toughest conflicts in the history of the world, and who served our country ably and well. Both men have been through hell and back to keep our country free. My role in all this was a small one. You've given me the great honor of being your elected representative in Washington. And a little bit over a month ago, we had a crucial vote. A vote on whether to authorize the President of the United States to use whatever means necessary to expel the Iraqi military from Kuwait. I worried and I prayed longer and harder over that decision than probably any decision I'll make in my life. Because anytime you're talking about sending America's finest halfway around the world and putting them in harm's way, that has got to be the hardest decision that anyone can make. But I felt then and I feel now that President Bush was correct, that Saddam Hussein is an evil, brutal dictator who needed to be stopped, and if we didn't do it now, it would be that much harder later. So I voted to give their president the authority he needed to allow our military to do its job, and they have done that job brilliantly. Regardless of our triumphs and past wars, the state of our weaponry today and the state of our military personnel is so high that this has got to be not only the most powerful armed force ever assembled in the history of the world, but also the most humane. Our weapons are hitting with pinpoint accuracy, that's not to say that a few mistakes haven't been made. But we have spared civilian populations more than in any other conflict that the world has ever known. I think we should be proud of that because our real enemy is Saddam Hussein and his military, not the Iraqi civilian. Those poor, misguided, and tortured people oftentimes don't know any better. But regardless of what Peter Arnett and Radio Baghdad have been saying, our troops have been doing an absolutely first-rate job. Come on! <laughs> I think our Congress has learned something from all this, too. I think instead of seeing a lot of the divisive debate that we saw back in the Vietnam years, we are seeing a remarkably united group of people in Washington, not as united as I would like, to be honest with you. But they're trying to repair a lot of the mistakes of Vietnam so that we never have to face the turmoil and divisiveness that we had then. I think all of us want to have the military do its job without political interference. In the Vietnam War, President Johnson tried to pick bombing targets from the White House basement. He didn't know his job. That's a job for Norman Schwarzkopf and the commanders in the Gulf to be doing today. That's right. President Bush has wisely delegated that authority to us. Yes. So, 
No handcuffs, that's right. <laughs> Phil's calling out there. So I think all of us, regardless of the anguish that's going on in our own hearts this afternoon and tonight, for the next several days and weeks, all of us can rest confident in the notion that there will be no handcuffs on our military, that they can do their job, they're doing a brilliant job, and that this will not be another Vietnam conflict. We're going to bring back... We are going to bring back our troops quickly and safely after a great victory, and we are going to honor those veterans, not only now, but for the rest of our lives. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman Cooper. The next person I'm going to introduce today needs no introduction in Bedford County. He's been a personal friend of mine for many years. In fact, our families have been friends for generations. His father and my uncle were roommates in the University of Tennessee back, I believe, in 1908. He's a World War II veteran. He's a Marine. You don't have to be around him very long to find that out. He's, he was a prisoner of war during World War II. He's one of the very few that escaped from a Japanese POW camp to fight again. He's still fighting. He attended a Marine camp this past week in Virginia. He says he was an instructor. I kind of doubt that myself. I imagine he was uh, attending classes, and next week we're here in Saudi Arabia fighting again. <laughs> but anyway, I present to you a true Bedford Countyan, a true American, a Marine Corps, General Austin Shawford. Austin. <laughs> and the family's been here since 1806. So at least one good true honest statement's come up here to say. <laughs> uh, I hope you can understand me. I have store-bought teeth. I had scurvy so badly in prison camp at uh, left for solid sore and it wasn't too bad during the day. You keep saliva and your tongue, all the skin's off your tongue. But at night, when you wake up with a warm breath, you're pulling all the skin off your teeth, off your lips, and that's a rather sensitive area of your body. So, if you don't understand me, try a little hard. <laughs> it's great to be here with Congressman Cooper, who's a cousin. Yeah, that's all. We've been here this long. We've got to be. You know, we overlap. <laughs> And uh, Jerry Brest, his mother was my favorite teacher, and I know she taught about half of you out there because she was here for about 45 years. And uh, she's a great lady, and I just wish she had been able to hurt her son this evening when, when he speaks. I think the chaplain did a tremendous job today from what he did last week. He poured the water out, and today he let have the sun through. And I think the chaplain really deserves a great round of applause. <laughs> Now, 49 years ago, and I know I don't look that old, uh, <laughs> I was at Subic Bay in the Philippines. That's the bay just north of Manila Bay when December 7th occurred, 49 years ago. And I want to say that you want to thank, you hear what we're doing over in the Near East, but you better thank Reagan and other people up there in Washington that had, had the arms for them. I was in the Philippines. We had no torpedoes that would work. Our mortars didn't work. We were under strength, untrained. In fact, you know, our nickname was the Badland Bastards of Batan. Uh, glad that we don't send troops overseas unprepared. And these, apparently, from what I see, I not look at that television, about 27 hours out of every 24, trying to see what's happening in this. We really have some tremendous technical advantages, and thanks to the good politicians who voted that in for the armed forces. Because I ended up being one of the largest 
PO, groups of POWs in history, and that is no good. Uh, I just hate to say the treatment of a prisoner of war is unbelievably tough. Only one officer out of my battalion lived through prison camp, and he died three months after he got back in the States due to malnutrition and other things. So I sure hope what we see in the, of our prisoners, there's nine that have been prisoners of war, I hope they're treating them better. They look like they've been worked over with a hammer to me, but uh, I'm sure hoping I misread it. The other thing that I think we're extremely fortunate in having a president who was a, the youngest fighter pilot in the history of the Navy, he went into the Navy, was a fighter pilot at the age 19, was shot down over 40 times. I mean, uh, she was in 40 combats and shot down one time. So, <laughs> trying to get him out, bumped off. Uh, <laughs> but to me, you've got somebody up there with the guts to run this government. And I think that it's great that we elected him and Tennessee went for him. And I think that the world's going to appreciate it. I just returned from Quantico, Virginia, as it was stated a minute ago. I was up there uh, teaching escape and evasion and survival. I guess there's nothing better than a Tennessee hillbilly to teach them that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to remain after this talk. If anybody wants to come up and ask me any question about anything at any time, I'll be here to answer you, and I want to thank you for the very fine. Hey, I would just wish San Francisco and Beatnitz could see this crowd. <laughs> 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 thank you, General Schaffner. I want to ask you a question. I want an answer. Isn't it great to be an American? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I meant to ask that the second time, but you did great the first time. Next. We have the mayor of the city of Chabaville, Mayor Henry Fellhouse, who will introduce the main speaker of the day. Henry? Thank you very much. And I am truly honored and thankful to each and every one of you for being here today. This is a very impressive crowd. Uh, to follow up on what General Schaffner said about the beatniks in San Francisco, I happened to be in San Diego about three weeks, three weekends ago, I believe it was, and that's where we got these shirts that we're wearing today, and they were having rallies like this. But they also had some counter rallies across the street from the main rally where most of the people were, and those people seemed to be getting a lot of the attention of the cameras on the news that night. And I think as I look around from up here, I don't see a single one and that speaks well for Shelbyville and Bedford County. And thank you all very much. And again, on behalf of the city of Shelbyville, we do want to thank you very much for participating in this. And certainly, when uh, Phil Mahaffey came to me several weeks ago about doing this, uh, I jumped right in his face and said, go with it and I'll support you all the way. But I am, my main job here today is to introduce truly another local hero, a member really of the high tech community of our warfare today, Admiral Jerry Brest, one of our own native sons who also made it to the top in his profession. He was in charge of a very similar, or, had to do with a great deal of the detailed planning on a very similar issue concerning a fellow named Qaddafi, whose name also comes up sometimes with Saddam Hussein's name. But this is the fellow who helped take care of that situation in Libya. And I got to hear him speak a few weeks ago at the Rotary Club, and, he was, and I was very impressed about his high-tech nature and his professionalism uh, explaining the way the troops are trained and how professional they are this day and time. And I was extremely honored 
when Paul Parker called and asked if I would introduce him. He said be brief and don't get into a whole lot of details about his life and history and all that, so I won't. But I would like to say if y'all would give a, please, a, a very large round warm of applause for the Rear Admiral Jerry Brest. Thanks, folks. It's good to be here. When they asked me to come down, I started to think about what I ought to talk about, and there were three things that came into mind. One of them was that we're Tennesseans, the other one was that we're Americans, and the third one is that we're right. And I'd like to talk about that in just a minute. All through my 32 years in the United States Navy, my leaders used to use the old axiom, when in doubt, do it right. Now, that's what they'd say to kind of counsel their juniors about making decisions about uh, that could range anywhere from diplomacy and combat to more per personal choices like what you do on liberty in a foreign land or something like that. It's pretty simplistic guidance, but what it presupposes is that you know the differences between right and wrong in each of the issues. In the current issue, which is the invasion of Kuwait by Iraq, it is consoling to know that there is absolutely no doubt that we're absolutely right by every standard of morals, ethics, and even international politics. And given that we are sure about that and that, that this is a just cause and dedicated to a fair application of a correct course of action by our nation, what does it mean then to be a Tennessean and an American. Well, let's think about that for a second. As a Tennessean, we really have a tremendous heritage of standing up for causes which are just and right, even if they seem to us to be very remote to these hills and mockingbirds and walking horses that we love so much here in Middle Tennessee. For instance, in the early 1800s, Andy Jackson started out by taking the first of our volunteers to fight the British in New Orleans. You know what happened in that situation. Not 25 years later, Sam Houston was fighting with Tennessee volunteers against Santa Ana in Texas and Mexico in a series of battles which gave Texas its independence and changed the whole geography of North America and the scope of the United States. I like going to Texas because I always tell them that. In the Civil War, for instance, there were two armies of the Tennessee one for the Union side and one for the Confederate side. Here was an incident when we really weren't sure that we were exactly right or what the issues really were. Did you realize, though, that Tennessee was the second most fought over state in that whole bloody Civil War? During World Wars I and II, our volunteer spirit sent thousands of young Tennesseans to fight in both theaters of war, Japan and Germany. Perhaps that spirit is best personified by Sergeant Alvin York from World War I, who with a turkey gobble and a steady eye, neutralized hundreds of the Kaiser's Huns on the Western Front in World War I. And the volunteer spirit continues. You heard just a moment ago that there are more volunteers, there are more National Guard and reservists from the state of Tennessee than any other state. In 1962, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, 18 of us pilots were sitting in our squadron down uh, in, the, in the Caribbean waiting to fly over Cuba. And we took a count and four of the 18 were from Tennessee. Uh, in 1985, I relieved an admiral in the Mediterranean that was from Tullahoma and went immediately to work for another one from Fayetteville. So I guess you could say that Middle Tennessee had an absolute lock on the Mediterranean. <laughs> so don't ever begin to think that the terminology, the volunteer state, misses the mark. It doesn't. It means something very special and certainly means something very current. Okay, if you accept that, then the next question is, what then is the philosophical significance of being an American in times of crisis like this? It basically means, first, that we're God-fearing people. We know we have been blessed to be born in a land of freedom, of independence and plenty. 
and we have an absolute allegiance to that land and the God who put us there. You know, that's probably something we just take for granted. But have you ever thought how you'd feel if you were born someplace else? Second, it means that we are the most powerful nation in the world and we're willing to bleed and die on foreign soil for just causes if it means we can keep the world stable, peaceful, and striving toward freedom of the human spirit. You know, power is much like energy. You ever thought about that? Those of you that took high school physics, or didn't for that matter, there is a natural limit to it, to the power, and physical laws which govern its use. The exercise of power, even by a nation, is a very critical thing in that the prudent use of potential energy is very much the same. If you don't use it effectively and toward a productive end, you can end up with less than you started with. So even nations have to be prudent about the exercise of power. It means we respect the rights of other people, we Americans, to believe, think, and even act differently than we do. Our will on others until we begin to see them denying basic freedoms and the well-being of third nations or third parties, and then we're willing to stand up for them. It means that we acknowledge, being an American means that we acknowledge that our systems and institutions of government and justice are not perfect. Nobody ever said we were perfect, but they are far and away the best that modern man has come up with and that we must realize our weaknesses and constantly work to improve them as a nation. So then, what does all that mean? What are those implications of being an American, being a Tennessean, and being right? What are those implications on the actions that we're taking in the Persian Gulf? First, we absolutely must win, and we must do it decisively. And as you have just heard, everybody in your nation's leadership apparently is dedicated to that, and we can rejoice for that. <coughs> The reason we have to do that is because there is a villain loose on the world scene. There's just absolutely no doubt that Saddam Hussein is a villainous character and he's got to be apprehended. The second point is regardless of the outcome of, val of battles in Kuwait and Iraq, there will be a lot of suffering over the next few years as the fallout of terrorism descends as an aftermath to the war. Have you thought about that? Unfortunately, Arabs and Muslims will see us as the great Satan that has come to punish them like we were new crusaders. But it's not the first time we have faced crisis. In 1776, Thomas Paine, a real patriot, said before the House of Burgesses, these are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of his country. But he who stands it now deserves the love and honor of all men and women. And that's what we owe to our troops in the Gulf. Thank you, Admiral Brest. It's real good. I'd like to make one announcement next. This coming Tuesday night at 7.30 at the Chamber of Commerce building, there'll be a meeting of the Beaver County Democratic Club at which we'll have a colonel that will answer questions that any family member might have that have members of your family in Saudi Arabia and Persian Gulf. He's going to speak a few minutes now. I understand he'll answer questions. Any of your families, if anyone else you'd like to ask any questions, I'm sure he'd be glad to answer. I'd like to thank at this time just a few people, and I'll make this brief. Sam Arnold's up here on the podium. Sam, stand up. Let's give Sam Arnold a great hand. Sam's our veteran service officer, and he's worked nearly solid the last week or two on this. He's done a great job, along with our United Veterans Council. I'd like to thank David Craig and Alvin Wheeler. They're really the company for having the PA system here today. They